Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Sojourn, and Sojourn is about a time traveler. It's actually from a, we originally had a presence in the game Cthulhu Deck Builder, and he has now made his uh, way into his own unique game. He is playing as a, the time traveler, and you are playing as him. Uh, what happened was he lost his ability to time travel correctly, and he ended up in the uh, Jurassic period, so he's with the dinosaurs right now, and he's trying to get his time spheres together so once he's going through time to find these things so that way he can fix his time traveling ability to where he can go where he wants through history now luckily you're going to have time stream cards throughout the game which are going to help you maneuver through history and uh, try and acquire all the different time fragments this is a deck of cards you're going to be getting as well and you'll be trying to find these time fragments through each different point in history as well as acquiring uh, the ability to take damage and the ability to uh, suffer some other nasty consequences but if you can manage to accomplish the solitaire game by getting all for the time fragments you can put yourself back together again and start going where you want all right let's go and take a look at it so here we have Sojourn, and as you can see, it's all the components of the game. You're going to be getting your Time Traveler card along with his Temporal Charges and his Health Meter here, as well as his Time Spheres he's going to need to collect throughout this game. Now, it's a solitaire game, so there's only one player in the game you'll be playing as, which is the Time Traveler as this little cube here. And you're going to start in the Jurassic period. It tells you the time and the date, and it also tells you that uh, you're going to be needing to go through to get these Time Spheres or Time Fragments. If you can collect all four, you're going to win the game. To start off, you're going to start with five of these Time Streams cards simply take them from the deck and put them into your hand you'll be acquiring more throughout the game and you can use these whenever you feel it is necessary there's gonna be different cards that you can get like paradox that let you travel to a destination with no time for no time stream drop or temporal charge cost but there's other costs as well you have stuff like this that lets you uh, restore your temporal charges stuff that restores your health and other things as well uh, like uh, this thing here like time fracture anyway to start off you're going to simply take a destination from the deck and place it above you whenever you're going to a new location you're always going to put it above you and uh, if there's everyone already in front of you you're going to put it to the side from the left or the right hand side so we have to actually move this deck we might need to you're also going to get this uh, handy handy dandy die here which are going to basically be percentage die and what's going to happen is after you've gone and played a card you can choose to use any of these in your hand or simply to move when you move you always have to go up and um or, or to any of them in the uh, next time zone. So we're gonna go up here, and you're gonna start over here. So it tells you how many cards you need to drop, TS drop, which is time stream cards drops, so zero. Then it's going to be a cost for this temporal charges, it'll call you cost two there. And then, of course, this one right here is going to put another destination out, which will go up here. Whenever you put a new destination out and there is a time fragment, you're gonna simply leave that there and add a new destination. If there's multiple time fragments, you're gonna just put them underneath. These are the cards you're going to be trying to acquire throughout the game. After that, you're gonna to go to the risk assessment, you're going to take the die here and roll them. You need a 25% or higher. And if you don't get that, like in this instance, it's a 10 and a 2, which is 12, then you're going to suffer damage. And this is suffer 2 damage. If you ever run out of health in the game, you're out. So you have to be very careful of that. And at the end of it, you're going to also gain a card or whatever it says. So gain one time string card. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we're going to go ahead and look at our hand. Of course, this is a good place to go. Uh, sometimes it's going to have an asterisk and it'll tell you what you need to do in order to suffer that. This is discard all your temporal batteries. But luckily, like I was saying, before we have this one right here. This is called the paradox. We can simply travel to a destination and we won't have to pay for the time stream cost or the temporal charge cost. We'll move this here and add another card out to the fray. Also, then we're gonna have to go to a risk, 75%. We need 75 or better. That's 48, that's not gonna do it. It's gonna cost us two more damage. And then we're gonna go over here, gain another time stream card. And then we collect any time fragments provided we accomplish this goal here. When you collect one of the cards, you're gonna simply take one of these cubes here and place it like that. Bandages is useful, so we can go ahead and discard that to add another health to our to our pool there. We're also gonna be able to discard these batteries. They will increase our temporal charge up. And we have other things we can use too, like fractures. This is add a new destination to the time zone. So if we do that, we go ahead and put that right there. And discard this card here. And we have the option between these two cards if we would like. There's other cards in the deck like Loop that says you can return to any open destination from any time zone with an earlier date. So for instance here, this one says 1938. So we can't go to 1963, but we can go back to the Jurassic period, or we can simply go to one of these two areas. Uh, and it'll also tell you that it doesn't cost you any drop, cost, or risk, any of these things here, which is good. They won't cost you and you want to do that. So maybe you can play this card here, move this thing over here, won't cost us these two things. We simply add another card up to the top here. Here's another time fragment, which is what we need. Put another card up there and uh, suffer no risk and gain two more cards here. And the game is going to continue like that. You're going to be going up through different timelines to collect the time fragments provided that you can. If you can get all of all four of these guys here, you're going to win 
the game. However, you're going to lose if you cannot pay for the cost of the card or if you run out of health. And that is the basic aspect of the game. A couple of caveats before we get into the review. First of all, when you run out of cards in your Time Strain deck, you're going to simply take these cards and reshuffle them, and then you can start drawing from that as well. Like I said before, if you run out of health, you're in trouble. And also an interesting thing too is if you're at the bottom of a timeline and there's two timelines above you, you can choose to go to any of those that are above, either on the left or the right, all the way through. What you can't do is go back down unless you have certain cards in your hand, like a Paradox here or maybe a Loop card here. These will let you go ahead and go through the different timelines. And it's also going to give you the ability to have more choice because choice is very important in this game. This game is a solitaire game, so it's a single player experience in which you're just going through and trying to collect all the different time fragments to fix your watch. And that's really, really cool. I love the theme of this game. It works very well. I like the fact that it, it, it's kind of attached to a character from another game, the Cthulhu deck building game, which also is really cool because I really like that character. It's actually by the, de the designer himself is like kind of like the character of this, which is <laughs> it's kind of cool. And I want to do something like that eventually. But the art on this is awesome as well. I love the art on these cards. I think it works very well. There's tons and tons of different artwork from all different periods of time, and they're very relevant to periods of time as well, so it's kind of a little learning experience as well. Um, being able to draw these time stream cards, these are like your bread and butter. They're very, very useful, but you have to be wary because you need these cards sometimes to discard them in order to go through different uh, different periods in history. And if you don't have them, you're going to be in trouble because you can't use them. You don't want to run out of resources in this game. I would say the game is medium to easy, provided you kind of have a good grasp on board games, and if you don't, it can be a little challenging, especially especially if you don't make the right moves, which is nice. It's a game that's similar to like Solitaire and other single player games like that, but it has its own unique theme, its own unique feel, and you do need a bit of table space as well. That's one thing I will say. Uh, the rule book is gonna be hopefully polished up a little bit. It took me a little bit to understand, but once I finally got it, as you can see, the game's very simple to understand, very simple to play, and hopefully with this little review as well as walkthrough, you have an idea of how it's done. Overall, I highly suggest this game. If you like solo player games, it's quick and easy. You just bring it out, play it, and then put it away. It's definitely game you should check out. Uh, yep, that's it. Sojourn. Check it out in the description below.